lot. <laughs> and we're live, and it's TGI Friday here to kick off your Lego loving weekend. And this week we are talking about uh, what inspires you, who or what inspires you, what drives your hobby, what drives what you build. Is it uh, awesome mocks that you see online? Is it something interesting in your Lego box, pieces, colours, or competitions? Do you love being competitive? <laughs> oh, there's some more tonight. And oh. guess what? I have been doing TGI Fridays for a year. Yay! How about that? Ne never thought that would be a thing, hey? That's pretty awesome. That's a yeah, good it milestone. Awesome. And it's it is very good. Tonight I have Bailey who is here for my very first TDI Friday. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> it's a good occasion to come back. I know. It is. Hello. So I think I think I think he knew. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was in my mind's eye. I thought, Cherie, it's a important <laughs> part. <laughs> The stars are all lined in belly like a free. Yeah, it's it's rare, so I'm glad that I'm able to be here. Ah, awesome sauce. Okay, so tonight on my panel, I have a pretty full bar down there of the the boys. We have Phil from Mount Isa. Hey guys. We have Joe from the Gold Coast. Hey guys, how we doing? We have my. Re recently pretty regular James. Hello. Yeah. And where are you from, James? Lots of brain. <laughs> and where are you from, James? Oh, yes. I'm I'm uh, from the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. Um, um, nice just... place. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also got uh, Daza, a.k.a. Gandalf, a.k.a. that Mexican from south of the border. Evening, peoples. And also uh, my brother from the same mother, Adam from Inside the Brick Box, who seems to be... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. If, if you don't get the get the reference, I've been to um, Ikea today. Yeah, and you just have to tell everybody <laughs> about it. But how has everyone's Lego week been? All Lego out. You're all Lego out. I didn't even never do anything with Lego. Has anyone been up to anything interesting? Uh, I made uh, largest purchase so far in the last three years of strange collecting. Oh, really, oh, Bailey? What, what was that? The jacket? Uh, yeah. So, the jacket? <laughs> yeah. Um, over how much was it? I don't think I want to say. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, say it out loud. I was going to say it's it's polite not to say, but who's been polite? I mean, it was either this or the Porsche, or maybe two Porsches. Um, <laughs> but or maybe two. It yeah. was it was a like a once in a lifetime Grail purchase. You know the uh, Lego Land ambassador, like the the door greeters and guards around the parks that had the. Oh. Red, red blazers on uh, back in 60s and 70s. They've sort of made it a bit more casual nowadays, but they still do the blazers. Well, I managed to procure one of those blazers from a Billund Park employee from the early 70s. Wow. Nice. So, so in, and in, in, does, in terms of... It's a European large from like five decades ago and so it's a perfect medium for me now and it fits and so next time I go to a convention once it arrives I think I might have a uniform to wear. Wow, that's that, awesome. impressive, dude. That, I, I can, cool. so, something like that's only really going to uh, sort of uh, appreciate and value too, isn't it? Well, to a Lego collector, yeah. yeah. As long as I keep it in good nick. Nick, yeah. I, I think uh, to any sort of collector... Lego collector, it's definitely going to be. You do realise that's just upped your value when you attend the show. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. So, but the thing is, would you would you really want to be just sort of cruising around wearing it at a show, or would it be more something you'd want to be keeping yeah, safely? Probably a mannequin for the most part at shows, uh, but yeah. I'll take it off and wear it every now and then. 
<laughs> just cruise it around in it. Yeah. Yeah, just stay away from the canteen area. <laughs> I was going to say, so, so somebody with like their box of hot chips and sauce is like, oh. like hello, ladies. Is there a hat to go with it? Uh, no, it was just the blazer, and so I'll get a nice dress shirt and red vest to go with it, and I'll have to get some white uh, military dress pants, no pockets. Um, I'm guessing probably just a standard black belt, uh, but the garrison cap I will need to find somewhere. Uh, see if I can complete the whole look. That's pretty awesome. Now, uh, are, are, you, are, you, are you still looking at getting that um, custom printed fig too for your sig fig? Yes, yeah, all of the hair pieces, Dana's hair from the Ghostbusters, and my facial hair, minifig head, have arrived. And so I just awesome. need to get all of those printed, and it's all, all good to hand out. Oh, man. Awesome. Look out now, look out. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah. Well, it seems as though Bailey's talking first, Shriek, and he, can we talk about what inspired inspires him? Because he's usually yeah. the most interesting. <laughs> There, I mean, there's a few there's a few factors. So what inspired me to get back into Lego was you guys. I got into Q-Lug. Um, oh, how long would it have been? Four or five years ago, Shrew? Uh, maybe four. Four, you were probably. Like uh, first, I think. Oh, it wasn't that early. But I had no idea. I was one of those people that just sort of sat in my room playing with the Lego doing whatever, not thinking that there was an outside world that was also interested in it. And so it was you guys that inspired me to get into Lego collecting. Uh, getting into the ridiculous, strange oddities that I collect nowadays, I, I don't actually know what inspired me to do that. I think for such a large company, I like the idea that they're fallible. I like the idea that there's <laughs> mistakes that people can find and there's, you know, issues that come up and there's a history behind every facet of the Lego company, whether it be production or branding or image or, you know, all of that sort of stuff. That just intrigues me. So I think the the thrill of the, the hunt inspires me to, to do the sort of collecting that I do. Yeah. Awesome. That is really cool. And I have to say that um, before I met Bailey, I really didn't know very much of anything about the history of Lego. <laughs> and you do stuff too. Like I, I adore the I, your stuff that you collect. I, I think it goes to say for anybody, even someone really sort of new like me that doesn't really have much or didn't have much of an idea, like a, a Bailey sort of a 10, 15 minute chat and you got a pretty good idea of just about the whole last 50 years. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to quiz me on a topic, yeah. I'm happy to give you a speech. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, like, like that we have people like Bailey in our community. Well, it, it, even it, even his display, man, like just have been able to sort of physically see how it was and the, and the wooden stuff and that, it's just, it's good. And you're looking but not touching, aren't you? Yeah, no, I looked of with course. my eyes, not my not, not my fingers. I've I've got a I've got a four year old. Remember, I constantly was saying that last weekend. Look with your eyes, not your hands. <laughs> no greasy hot chips. <laughs> no greasy hot chips. Uh, it's been we we uh, just a quick little off topic story. I had a couple of disasters, so Dominic does the special effects in my photos with the blower. So I had my camera set up, had the minifig set up, and obviously uh, like light dirt, so he'd sieve dirt all around the place so it would blow easy. And he's just picked up the blower and just proceeded to sort of just mm. blow, a, blow her entire dust storm, like he just totally covered the camera, everything. He's <laughs> a pro, mate. He's a pro. Does the job properly. Yeah. You're going to do something. You might, as well, you might as well give us a go at it. Uh, this <sighs> assistant is 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 young. Is four, yes. I was going to say four, but I was like, did he say four? Mm. Yeah, yeah uh, he's four. He's learning learning early. Learning early, yes. Look, your son has the most insane hair, dude. He has incredible hair. Yeah, it's a big afro. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't, 
<laughs> we, we were going to cut it, but uh, we're probably not going to cut it now because you can tie it up and get it out of his face. Just yeah. let it grow, man. By the time he's 20, make sure it's like a meter wide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at, <laughs> look at me. This is like yeah. 50 meters growth in two years. Well, he, 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 well, yeah, well, that's it too, man. And pe people with good hair, they, they sort of know you're rocking it. When, when it's out, they're like, you, you know you're rocking it. People are like, whether you like hair or you don't, you're sort of like, wow, look at that guy's hair. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what about you, Darren? What, what inspired you to get back into, because you, you're a bit, little bit like me, you had a pretty big dark age. Oh, massive dark age, mate. Um, probably more than 20 years worth. Um, it's, it's always good hearing people's sort of dark age I, I think spark. Wrong. I, it, it wasn't, wasn't a dark age, it was more a twilight zone. It was just sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> kept giving Lego to all my friends' kids. Oh. And, uh, well, and that, and that enabled me as an adult to, to still indulge a little bit in Lego. Um, but, yeah, you sort of get frowned upon and back in, like... A few years back, Lego's become more acceptable now for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, for me, basically, it was like four years ago, or it's just sorry, just on three years ago, a friend of mine who lives here locally on Phillip Island has built, built modeled his house on the Villa Savoy. And I yeah. didn't honestly know there was such a thing as a Lego buy swap sell on Facebook. And one night, as the ads pop up down the side, an ad popped oh, up for nice. a Lego buy swap sell. And the item that just happened to come up was because I had actually done a search for the Villa Savoy earlier in the night, the ad that popped up was for a buy swap sell, an actual Villa Savoy set available for sale. And I just instantly on the message to my mate saying, Go, dude, do you realise there's a Lego model of the house that you pretty much modelled your house on? And he's gone, how much? And I told him how much and he goes, oh, really? He's gone done get it for me so i because I, I was i joined the site straight away got approved it was the first purchase i made it wasn't for myself um i've since bought him a couple more of those and thankfully i did at the time because they've been very hard to find now so yeah and and just as another side thing another project of mine in the future i want to do a bit of guys version of that bill um as something as a sponsor okay, so so, yeah, it was a bit out, and then all of a sudden it became, I won't say an obsession. Um, we're not obsessed. Um, you wouldn't yeah. say. I'm expecting uh, I wouldn't say, no. I wouldn't say that We're all friends here. We're, we're all, all friends, friends here. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I must admit my first few purchases off of buy swap sales, I won't say I got totally ripped off, but I know I paid more than I probably should have. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so did I. And, and next minute I found this this thing called Bricklink, and I haven't had oh, any oh, camera gear since. And, and it's been a downhill slide ever since. I, I have bought very little camera gear since I discovered Bricklink. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have the same problem. I, I honestly don't think I'd be sort of half as into it if I hadn't sort of discovered the, the actual community. That Yeah. Because I, I think oh, the, yes, the, but, the community sort of like, sort of, uh, Where are a bunch of yeah, yeah, yeah. Enables, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that, again, of... that's for me too. I, I, I saw on the buy swap cells, people asking questions like I wanted to ask, like what's this worth, and get hounded for it. Mm. So next thing you know, I've started my own Facebook page where it was to try and encourage people to come and ask questions and get them answered by people who knew what they were about. And from there, I got someone from Mugs actually contact me and say. Hey, there's actually this group in Melbourne where we come and have meetings once a month. Month, come join us, be one of us, one of us, one of us, and one of them. And it's yeah. So that was mugs, by the way. Um, yes. And now, now I'm a member of like six different um, lugs, and yeah, a couple of them. Yeah. Why, why be in one lug when you can be in? Yeah. And a couple of them I'll never get to attend because they're overseas ones. I doubt I'll ever get to go to them, but. Um, yeah, but all the, all the Australian ones I hope to get to sooner or later. Um, I've been to all of the Australian ones I'm a member of except for Q-Lug so far, so hmm, I'll get there. Next well, what, when you make up this way, we'll have a meet just so that you can say you've been on me. Cool. Cool. So you guys are all meeting me halfway, aren't you? About Coffs Harbour maybe would be close to me. <laughs> that's not halfway, but that's sort of, you know. I know it's that's tweet. Tweet, guys. Darren. The tweet. Sweet. Yeah, so it's still technically in New South Wales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, then but, but then it's no longer Q-Lug, is it? 
<laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. So we'll all have to make it to the other shore. Still, we are Q-Log no matter where we go. And some. Actually, I thought we include Northern Rivers as Q-Log anyway. No, we have members from all over anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, while you're talking, Adam, what what inspires you, Adam? I have to open my big mouth. <laughs> oh. Just Lego. Just Lego. What about Lego? Just Lego kits that inspire me. Okay. Um, what's the name? He de designs all the um, modular series. I love his sets. Yeah. That's it. So I couldn't think of his name off the top of my head then. Yeah, no, no. I like I like sitting down just reading re reading hit the the manuals online of all the different modulars and seeing his different design techniques and putting them in, in into my um modulars. Who the uh, Who, uh, is not well enough. Yeah, J James, is that you rustling around in, in Lego? No, it's not actually. Um, I've got these in my hands. Yeah, uh, no. Okay. And it's it's not me. I think it's just random interference. Uh, before, yes, when I moved over and dumped. Um, but no, there was some random noise somewhere. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, anyway. Um. Who are we up to? I'll, I'll say what sort of got me out of my... I'm not, not sure if I've actually said it before. I always thought it was me buying those first couple of sets the, that I had when I was a kid. But um, the actual thing that sort of sparked it for me was one Christmas I bought my little cousin a um, the police, like the police um, roadside truck that sort of folded out. Yep. And, and I sat there. I sat there for about two hours on Christmas Day having a couple of beers and putting it together for him. And then I sort of flew flew back out to work and I was sitting in my room one night and I hopped on eBay and I was <laughs> just just thought, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I can find that set. I did, I, at that stage, I couldn't even remember what it was called, the Enchanted Island. <laughs> by, 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 ac by accident, I found it and I think I paid some ridiculous amount of money for it and then oh, it's set. By accident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then it, it sat it sat there for a few months, and then uh, me and Brittany started dating, and then it, was, it, it sat at her place, and then she sort of pulled it all out one, one day and started building it. And then it just sort of snowballed from there, except it sort of started as something we could do together, and now obviously it's um, <laughs> I, I, I've sort of I sort of took it a little bit more serious, and here we are. Nothing wrong with that. I think cre 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 creatively now, though, because I, I suck at building, I, I think the photos are definitely going to be it. But if oh, I, yeah, um, no. you yeah. might find another outlet. And yeah, yeah. I, I've I've done okay. I, I I do okay with like little things, like those little spaceships, or maybe a car here and there. But as, in terms of um, like putting together a big structure, uh, uh, it's, without the instructions, it's no, I'm not much chop. So. That's oh, no. It's a learning curve, mate. We'll see how you go in six months' time. You'll be telling us how to do stuff. <laughs> at least yeah. you can follow instructions, Joe. Hey? <laughs> at least you can follow instructions, Joe, unlike me. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's um, in terms of, like, social media and Instagram and stuff like that, how it's supposed to be negative for, like, body image and stuff like that when you're looking at, like, gym people and stuff like that. I think it almost goes the same way with, like, Lego. Like as you're looking at other people's builds and stuff constantly, and you, and you think you sort of think, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. And you look at Instagram, you're like, oh shit! Like, look at look how nice this look look how epic that is, or look at that picture or stuff yeah. like that. Okay, so it's always know. so it's always good to not compare yourself to everybody else. Too, but I suppose. We're always our own worst critics. Uh -huh. Yes, everybody yes. is their worst critic. You talk. It's if you talk to my mum, yeah. If you yeah. talk to my mum at a show, like. <laughs> massively put herself down, but her oh display God. kicks ass over mine. What, what do you mean? What do you mean if you talk to your mum? Your mum doesn't talk. Yes, she 
very little. I watched your interview on um your channel ABC, and she just oh yeah, she's like uh, uh, she gets a bit uh, camera shy. She's a bit camera shy, and also like that was like after a day of setup, so we were all pretty tired. And she was my yeah. literally my first interview of the weekend, so I was not warmed up, and I knew it was one shot. I only had one shot of getting her to show me around because she was tied up the whole rest of the weekend. No, nah, that's cool. I'm, I'm just, I'm and just her, poking and her, her sleeping bit. Her is one of the pain in the butt ones to set up too. So that oh. was lucky we had it set up. Yeah, but but it's good. like it's it. I'm just poking the bear. There's there's not a lot of people in Australia that do Western as a theme, so. Yeah, it's one it's one that I think we need to sort of look at a little bit more too, because I think we've got some daughters who can do it very well. I know, uh, but I think the um with the Western theme, it doesn't it doesn't drive very well because there's nothing current in the Lego catalog around that space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I, sort of, I, it's sort of one of those one of those things you gotta have passion for. I think though if you're if you're looking at the current aspect of it, that that really Who, yeah. who's going through the Lego again? Not me. Sorry. <laughs> so when you're looking Sorry, at the current yeah. thing, as long as you're making stuff and you're mocking stuff from current parts, <laughs> it's not a real issue. It's when people are using stuff that's so damn rare that no one can lay their hands on it. Yeah. And it's sort of it makes it to a point with some people that just go, I'm not even going to have a go because I can't get my hands on those parts. So that's that, that's something we always have to be aware of when we're displaying. I mean, just try and keep the, the parts as current as you can into a lot. Then again, if you're showing rarities like Bailey does, well, of course you want stuff that no one else can get because that's the whole part of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. The competition. Yeah, it's not, it's not, you know, the thing is, I, I look at it too this way. We're just speaking about competition. I saw a quote today. And it was on a, on a blackboard outside a cafe and it said, you should never compete with others. You should only compete with yourself because that's the only way you become a better person. So you, you, could, you, you, should make a little, you should make a little meme picture, Darren. You need a picture of a sunset, mate. Sunset and just overlay a bit of nice text over it. <laughs> yeah. James, James <laughs> wanted to say something there. Yeah. Hey? There might be some very interesting, um, interested... Um, people watching this um, either now or a little later on down the track, um, would it be, in regards to what you just said, would it be interesting to kind of play that back in the future? Um, say, like, after next Sunday, for example. Um, <laughs> and, and subsequent yes. every fortnight after the Sunday. Oh, it would it, it, just be interesting to see how that wisdom goes. But... Um, I, I, maybe we could just whip I, I up a said, whip I up a quick no, meme. To jump. <laughs> Darren, I'll get a nice picture of you from your Facebook, and then just put lots of nice that quote, and nice text. Like, it's not your my picture. quote, mate. It's not my quote. I stole, I stole it off a cafe blackboard. It's not my quote. I can't. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, we could we could make a nice meme with it though. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your dreams as long as they're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, far out. That's a good one. But just getting back to the, to the inspiration things, as Joe was saying, quite often you look at things like Instagram and Facebook posts and that, and you look at some of the quality of the build and you just go like, oh, God. And you know, it, it, can, it can be disheartening for some people. And you've got to look at it as, okay, what can I take from that to help my builds become better? It's not a matter of yeah. looking at it and saying, oh, I'm going to rip this up out of it and whatever. It's a matter of saying, okay, they've got some cool concepts. Mm -hmm. Take the concepts away and try and make your own twist on it. And that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. I, I think I th we've seen that with your photography as an example, Joe. You, you've yeah. done your own thing. You've got talent, mate. You're doing your own thing and it's good. But, it's it, but it's also very hard try, for everybody now because the social media is such a big platform and oh, it's, yeah. so, it's so saturated with good, uh, like, artists and that. It, like, when you are starting off, like, it's, it's, like, it's kind of hard because you, you sort of, try, you, even though you don't want to, you, you're always sort of constantly, compa like, st sticking your stuff side by side, other people's stuff. Yeah. Which, yeah which, 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 which you can't, which, which, which you shouldn't, shouldn't, um, like really, we shouldn't be doing, but it's just human nature to do it. I think. Yeah. So oh, look, whether you're a builder or a photographer or, yeah. or a collector, 
The thing that you have to remind yourself is that what people are presenting on social media, that is their A game. That is the, yeah. I'm proud of this. This is this, yeah. you know, the best that they can do. You don't see the 50 million photos that they took or all the, you know, all the rebuilds that they did trying to get it to that perfect. Perfect, perfect point. I never believe a person when I say, oh, I just picked this up. No, no. <laughs> I'm sorry I can build something uh, now. It's I made like a fantastic little eight by eight um, espresso machine, and I was like, I'm very happy with it. Like, right? yes, I've dismantled it and all of that, um, but it's a tiny um, espresso machine. But it, it took it actually took quite a while to make because as soon as you'd make it, it'd fall apart or it wouldn't be structurally sound or anything like that. And by the time that you put it on, and you're like, it'd fall apart. And then you put it on and it'd fall apart. Although you move it and then you'd make sure it got the right angle and then you'd sneeze and then it'd fall apart. <laughs> so the cat would walk in and it'd brush it with its tail and it'd fall apart. So, so yeah, nothing happens the first try. But, so but, then, what, James? but then once it was actually built, we, James, were you like, oh, this is a little something I whipped up on the weekend? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 Don't believe me. Uh, I think you can, you can surprise yourself too, Joe. Like the uh, that launch tower, I'm sure most of you are familiar with that I designed. Yeah. I was so unsure of the reception that that would get that I didn't post that on a Lego page first. I posted it on like a NASA fan page first, wondering really? if anyone. Yeah, because I knew that they liked the uh, Saturn V set. Yeah, and yeah, so, okay. And so I, went, I approached a, a NASA fan page before I went on a Lego page, and they all loved it. And then some of them said I should post it elsewhere, and so I did. 200-odd customers down the track. and I was going to say, now, pre pretty well everybody that's got a Saturn V, ultimately, if they could, would want that launch tower to go with it. Yeah, I, I had no idea the reception that it would get, and I thought, well, this is massive. I put way too many hours into this. Let's just chuck it out there and see how it goes, and it's... It's obviously gone all right so far, so I, I think you're um, a bit of confidence as well in what you've done can go a long way. You yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, um, it. I think it, it. A lot of people, if you if you're not that sort of um, personality, though, you, you don't want to sort of put yourself out there and look like a bit of a like a showboater sort of thing. I think that's where, it, where well, for me anyway, yeah. Yeah. you don't like being. Confident, but not too confident that you look like a bit of a toss. <laughs> That's true. But um, hey, what's the actual piece count on that, Bailey? Like, uh, it's about four and a half thousand. Thousand. That's right. Yeah, back in June last year, it was costing maybe half a grand because, yeah. but because so many people now have given it a go and attempted it, I think now the average price is about. Thousand two hundred US or something. Okay. How, so how, how much? That investment, a, a little th over a, a, a thousand US. Now oh wow! For okay. The whole tower through Bricklink. Um, but, but but I suppose if you're if, out, yeah, if you're if you're a collector though, like a, a solid collector, and you love the, the space stuff and that, it's it's an investment. Yeah, it's more price to pay. That's it. Pe look, pe people pay twelve hundred dollars for a dirty old Millennium Falcon, so. Yeah. <laughs> you can have the real deal. Oh, oh don't uh, start on that, James. James is in a sore spot about that. I, I think uh, I think it might cost a little bit more than twelve hundred bucks for a real falcon. Just, I never know. I've seen, I, I live in Benny there's a lot of old, you know, old, old twelve hundred dollar falcons <laughs> driving around. <laughs> <laughs> they're all the A's and they've all got little holes in the grass. So. An old XD. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. far from being the fastest hunk of junk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, far from being the fastest hunk of junk. I thought they are the fastest hunk Ford, of junk. Fastest on race day. Oh, my goodness. So does, it, does anyone want to guess what my inspiration is? You baby um, no, uh, That's the sun, isn't it? All of us. Did did you start with for your for your young fella Shree? Is that when you got oh. like got back into it? No, got back into it. I was never into it in the first place. Oh, you. I'm a noob. 
So was Sean, was Sean into it first or were you? Or did you do it together like me and Britt? Uh, Sean? Sean into it? <laughs> no, Sean liked Lego when he was a kid, but he was sort of in like his okay. dark ages. Massive yeah. dark ages. So so what was the what was the initial spark to sort of take it to that like next step? Well, as in uh, okay. Like like from having like one set to like being a being an admin and a lug and having a whole house full of it and being an active. Okay. Uh, uh, well, the admin and lug thing just sort of happened to me. Um, wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so enthusiastic about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, honestly, okay. Wasn't into Lego. Wasn't interested in Lego. Uh, frustrated by by sets. Can't follow instructions. Um, That's what she said. Oh shush. But uh, as uh, when when I say inspiration, I mean like you know what I build and why I build and you know what inspires me to build. I guess. Dinosaurs. Um. <laughs> so, what, what what is it? You, you left us hanging there, mate. We're not even guessing. I would have said dinosaurs because that's what you build. Oh yeah, hey, dinosaurs. Is it Jurassic Park? Hey, well, not really. Dinosaurs is my son's thing. Oh, we only was... started doing dinosaurs because that's what Lego he had. Oh okay. So obviously, Adam Adam always had Lego, and then he helped you get into it, or. Well, Adam's, Adam's, yeah. No, I didn't have a dark age. Never had one. Adam, Adam never had a dark age. Adam had a, like a, a maybe a, a slightly dark grey age. Architecture. Okay. Light blue grey age. <laughs> I, I played with Lego all the way through high school. It's a good out, outlet when you're you, you, you come home from. School and had a shit day. You just sit down and you build with Lego. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Architecture and I, I actually got into Lego because of Adam and through craft. Um, making um, jewelry. Uh, jewelry. Yes. Oh, okay. Jewelry is a brick mutilator. Yes, I am a brick mutilator. And I last night, me, Darren. <laughs> you craigle person. That's, yeah. that's all right. No, you should jam bloody eyelets in their heads. Oh, yeah, I drill and I screw <laughs> and I do all sorts of fun things. No. I, yeah. I, I, I actually... Um, <laughs> Everybody took that the wrong way. Well done. No, no. no I was going to say I actually successfully fixed in Photoshop without like probably the best one I'd done, the, the, hole, the hole in the top of Iron Man's head from the key rings because that's the cheapest way to get some of the real figs. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, was a bit holy. When, when I'm yeah. talking, when I'm talking about inspiration, I'm talking about what I actually build and stuff, not why I got into like. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. So, but if if you're building something, building something for your set self, would it be? Because I've only really ever seen. Yeah, is it the architecture stuff? Is that what you like? No. I know it's not about what I like; it's about what inspires me. Okay. okay. Well, you tell us. Adam's not even. <laughs> so, um, Dark Side Bricks has a had a forty year old dark dark age. <laughs> and Darren that he's filling in the gaps. Um, no, no, my inspiration, the things that inspired me were color. Color. Mm-hmm. Colour. Ah. Eh, eh, interesting bricks. I want my colour. Ah, ah. What? That that that, that, that was that, that, that was that, that was creepy, but okay, well Shoot. um <laughs> And moving right along. And moving right along. Yeah. That's okay. what she said. So all your other little um Thanks. but the the di the dinosaur thing was pretty well your your biggest but if you look at that too, that's that is quite colourful too, isn't it? You didn't just stick with like the the dark, the greys and all that. Oh no, no, I've got. Uh, well, actually, in the beginning, it had some bright yellow in it because that's the colour that 
came in the sets. Oh, from the original Jurassic Park sort of thing. No, that no, the... no, 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 from um, the 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 dinosaur theme that was, came out in twenty twelve, and those were the sets. Uh... Of Christmas and birthday that year. So. Oh, okay. What were they called? The the dino dino. Because uh, they had like the the big attack chopper and stuff like that for attacking him, and that didn't it? Yeah, it was actually okay. pretty violent. Was it called Dino Hunters? You sure? Yeah, some of that. Was it? Yeah, I just I just remember because uh, you... when I, when I first started streaming with you guys one night, we were going on helicopters and we went through that dino attack chopper. The, oh, um... Yeah, no, no, it wasn't that that thing. It was just dino. Uh, Dino, I think. Dino, was it? Yeah, yeah but it, it depends on which, which, because that particular theme was done two different ways in two different countries. No, that was, the American that was Dino Attack. Dino. That was the earlier one. Was it the earlier oh, Dino one? Attack. So is that the one that would have had the attack chopper, obviously? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. Europeans were all about trying to capture them and the, um, yeah. the American and Western style was about killing them. Oh, no. Oh. That makes sense. So, we so make let, let, Lego sort of moved away from anything that sort of, they're more about capturing stuff now rather than killing it. No, I don't know. It was, it was this weird thing. The European sets were just that particular, that particular now, series. Star Wars thing? Yeah, the, the American ones were marketed a lot more violently. I mean, you see it with, like, uh, video game characters. Kirby and stuff is smiling in Japan, but it's always frowning in the US and the Western world. It's just... Uh, oh, it, it was a mark. It's a marketing thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it was yeah. The, the European Dino Attackers that series got one more set in Europe from memory. Yeah, I think uh, in Europe it was Dino 2010. Yeah, yeah, was, name, yeah but... Dino 2010. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kirby That's freaks right. me out. I'm sorry. This giant yellow ball sucking up everything and. And yeah, blowing pink. back out, I'm like, no. Nah. Oh, pink. Sorry. He's... <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> oh, man. Even, you get He's that wrong. Him up and blowing him out. Uh, you know, it, it's a thing. That's why it scares you. You're thinking of Pac-Man. Yes! Yellow, orange thing with a bow, which is actually a <laughs> transsexual kind of blob that eats things. I don't know. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. Oh, James. Uh, and we've descended into All bed. right, James, what inspires That's... you with Lego? Well, um, I, I find Lego to be quite, you know, creative. Um, oh, sorry, no, it's, it's not creative in itself, sorry. I find it, it to be a great tool if I if I just look outside and, and, I don't know, just anything in the world could be an inspiration for Lego, to be honest. Um, and so whether or not I... I get parts from um, a vignette set or a friend set or just find sets that have little bits of individual bits and pieces that'll be useful i can assemble them into um you know a bunch of things like for example at the moment um what i've been doing um uh, and i hope it wasn't too noisy what i've been doing is basically uh putting beards on these guys here. So um, I didn't have enough Gimli beards uh, to fit, but I found one with with two braids. Oh, I so, want that one. That's nice. Yeah, I've, I've got uh, one of them too. That's, that, that, they almost look like a... That's nice, guys. They, they almost uh, look like a, um, a Warhammer dwarf. Yes, um, and then I've got an army of with Gimli beards, and I think that's fine. Um, the... The good thing is, just, oh god! Okay. I, I had a uh, a blood bowl team with that was dwarfs. Th this has yes. actually got the angry Scotsman uh, head. Arr. Kind of the. Uh, you you, you got to hold your hand against it, man. It's not um focusing. Oh, Sorry, it's angry Scotsman head, kind of. Oh, Can we can sort kind kind of make kind it of? out. Yeah, yeah there's a super figure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and so like. I don't know. See a movie, get inspired. Read a book, get inspired. Go outside, see things outside, get inspired. Um, and I, did did you have a dark age at all though, or did like something get you back into it from um, when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I, oh, I think I stopped at about 
16 or 17, VCE tends to do that. You just don't have any time for anything else. And then you come out of it and you're a man. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, <laughs> um, I was working at Meyer and um, I saw the, um, the Emerald Express or I think that's what it was called. The, yeah, the Green Engine. Emerald Knight. Yeah. Yes. Emerald Knight. Um, Emerald Knight. I, I saw that and I regretted not buying that. Um, and then the next one that I saw were the um, the races F1 cars, and that started me on the track. But what really got me back into it was um, the minifigure series because I just loved the the level of detail that they had in the sorry um, in the minifigures. Um, so I guess if a, a singular thing that actually inspires me would be the minifigures because you have something with a little bit of expression. You can build with it, and then you can make a scene to, to suit. So, needless to say, I'm very, very excited about the upcoming series. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Joe's like, clickety clack, clickety clack. Yes. So I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm replying. I'm replying. It's funny. We're talking to someone on the stream, but I'm about to reply to him on the YouTube chat. So, so. <laughs> oh, I yes. was what? What? Sorry, man. What? Sorry, man. What? What, what themes? No. Um, what, what? What theme are you looking forward to coming back this year? Um, CMFs. Harry Potter. Oh, CMFs. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah, well, actually, actually he he said it was exciting. Harry, yeah. Harry, Harry Potter. Harry no, Potter. No. Um, Please me? no. I would dearly, dearly love um, in the second wave because, you know, there are a few gaps so and stuff like that. Do, do, do you guys honestly think that there will be some sort of old, older theme brought, like revamped and brought back just to sort of keep the community happy, like in the second half of the year? Or Classic space. No. It would be lovely. It would be absolutely lovely. I thought, if, I thought, that was, I thought that's what out. Harry Potter was. <laughs> no, nah, classic space. Um, but that would won't awesome. they bring something back in the like the next half of the year, like like the Jungle Explorers this year, or they just come up with something with new and slap slap something new together city wise? Never know, because that's what they always do. Yeah, <laughs> like you think the next, the next. So the next one to come out, I think, will be an IP, uh, a personal IP. So Lego will own that IP because they don't want to pay for anything else. Well, Lego yeah. replace something with um, Mexico Knights. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I reckon, yeah, I reckon... Um... <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's, there's a lot of classic... Classic space love out there at the moment, and um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I, I think it's... classic space, if classic space stood, wouldn't stand, but using a lot of the parts and then putting a new twist on it, I think it would sell very, very well. Oh yeah, like um, I, I think, uh, in particular, space as a theme. Yeah, like, there is actually right. um, they did uh, like NASA did make a, a couple of sets um, and they showed them and stuff like that and. There's a lot more interest in that kind of environment. So whether or not it could be like a um, like a satellite, or whether or not it's you know, like a space station, or a moon base, or Mars, or yeah, kind of get people back in back into you know talking about it. I think then, those but, alien landscapes, like the moon bases and things like, that, are a very good area to work in because it allows you to get not just sets into the into an environment, but teaches you to build a diorama, which is a really cool way to get people to then to go on display. So once oh, people start building scenes and things like that, then you're likely to hang on to them through the dark age that most people normally fall into. And I think that's yeah. a very important point we've got to look at. We've got to get kids to go from that. But, yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. You've got to remember, too, anything they're going to be releasing, like it's not for an AFOL, it's for, it's for a child, Yeah. ultimately. Yeah. So I reckon like a classic space set, an individual, not a wave, but like a space wave because it will be current. Yeah. Um, sure. Like a, a Duplo, you know, space set or, you know, why not? But the, the, Something like tell me the, the would be good. Yeah. Yeah. A be... revamp of it. But have the last, the, like the last few spacey sort of, the spacey sort of ones like, um, like, uh, 
the Galaxy squad and stuff like that, like were they big sellers or did they sort of fumble a bit? Oh, and, like they, they were popular. Like, it, Mars but like um, spa- time, space, right? space Police has done three waves, hasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Space Police yeah. 1 was pretty well received. Space Police 2, I think, was okay. 3? Not so good. 3 was yeah, just... Yeah. Well, 3 was, was popular nothing alike. But it was, right. but it was well, nothing like com- the first two. It was like a whole new... It was basically like a whole new series. You could yeah. almost call it under the same I, banner. I, I, uh, I think okay. what might have sort of killed Classic Space in a way too was not the sales of Classic Space itself started to fall off so much. Then they tried to branch out and went with the Blacktron and what was the other theme at that stage? Mtron. Uh, Mtron. And uh, they didn't sell very well and it just sort of killed the whole line off in a way. But the thing is now, those those Mtron and Blacktron sets are like absolutely in demand. They bring stupid money. And I think the idea, the, the, the thing is there, a lot of people like Classic Space for the Classic Space colours mm. and, the, and the actual parts. There's a, there is a room there to actually bring that in and then bring those other lines in alongside of it like they had with the Mtron and the Blacktron, which did have the different colour in the same part. So, I, mate, I can see friend space selling hotcakes. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's space, mate. It'll go hotcakes. No, like, I wouldn't be surprised that the next Lego movie with Benny, with Spaceship, like the Spaceship, Spaceship, Spaceship went, yeah. like, that, that was a very popular model. Yeah. Um, oh, it sold ridiculously. Yeah, I wouldn't. But, I wouldn't be surprised that he would. Have, you know, Benning would have a couple of different space themed things that would go on. Yeah, there. but I so, like. Yeah. No, but, but was that sorry. was that was that popularity sort of off the back of the Lego Movie though? Yeah, it would have been. But yeah, I'm thinking more oh, along the lines that it could be like a, a city set, like the more scientific kind of thing. You know, like volcanology and stuff like that. It'd be. Like, um, they've done, they've done like volcano, like volcano, ice, jungle explorers. Yeah. So, like, really, what Moon. are they left with this year? The next thing is space, really, Moon, isn't it? Uh, space, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the, well, so maybe, sort of, maybe it's time for Area Fifty One. Oh, well, it's, no, it's, it's no, not science. Really. <laughs> yeah. Can I interject for like, a second? Like you're, like you're saying, a Mars one would be sort of plausible that they could have the Mars yeah. vehicles and all the stuff. Yeah. Well, the next five years, like, like people have only just f- finally stopped talking about that bloody Tesla in orbit. Like, it took long enough, but like it was everywhere. People were talking about it and talking about SpaceX. Like, yeah, Elon Musk were like fantastic. It's you know, like, this is great advertising. But yeah, like, how how long were people talking about that? What well, hell? I'm talking about it now. What? But oh. you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's in people's minds. Oh, okay. Ch- Ch- Charms just made a good point. He doesn't reckon <laughs> any sort of space. Point, but you all talk too much. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he, but he's just saying space won't come back as long as as long as Star Wars is there. Nah, nah cash, Star yeah. Wars is going to flop. Yeah, one's fantasy and the other one's yeah. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> But, but like you're saying too, like even the Batman, they pretty much flogged that to death, and now now all those sets are, are on. I, I know I've seen Jason in the states. He picked up like five clay faces for like ten ten dollars each or something, like some crazy discount on them. Like literally, they they're in the bargain bin now. So yeah, that movie didn't go that well. Yeah, that movie yeah. was an absolute write off. Like yeah, they I they would have been lucky if they made their money. It really should have went straight to the dollar ninety nine DVD bin. So, yeah. I, I, I would have thought honestly that like a second Lego movie, like d- continued on with the Duplo and stuff like that, would have been a, a better window, like way well, to are. go. Unless um, coming out next year, or is it later this year? No, I think they've canned that. To be honest, really? really what? Because they they blew too much money on the, on the stupid Ninjago one and the Batman. Mm-hmm. Right? Because the current trend for Lego generated films is going backwards. It's costing yeah. them more money to make them than it makes movie yeah, that you know the second Lego movie is done and dusted. They're just in yeah. ed- editing mode at the moment. Yeah, the second's been done. Oh, yeah. I think I would, yeah. Yeah, because um, um, Will Ferrell was over when he came over and he was actually involved in doing that. So. So, so, Barney, what's your take on space coming back made as a thing? It, it's weird. It seems like 
Let me grab up the list of space themes. It seems like some are absolute hits and then some which people think are going to be, you know, reasonably big. I'm talking about for the kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, end up being misses. Like, the, the concept of Nexo Knights seemed really cool. Like, it was futuristic stuff. It was sci-fi, but it was also, you know, medieval... Uh, related and, and yep. thematically that sort of thing. But the cool the Nexo Knights was marketed into like a collectible thing as well with the little those yeah. little shields and stuff though, wasn't I think, it? I think they went a little too hard in that hard section. In the and marketing. then there's the, the apps and the, the TV show, which is how it's done nowadays. But yep. I think just the, I don't know what it was that caused it to not be popular, but having... Mm -hmm. It almost went the way of Exoforce, where it had a, a pretty good start, a very small following, um, had its good first wave of design, second wave was a little lackluster, and then the third wave was like, let's get as much out as we can before this thing gets canned, and consequently, it's obviously getting canned. But if you think back to Mars Mission, horrendously popular theme. Just about everyone who had a kid around that time has a bunch of those green aliens in, you know, in their in their minifigure bin. Big orange wheels. <laughs> and it was it was basically just a modern update of the classic space design. Like the it, it had crystals, which the aliens were trying to get to, and the um, and the humans were trying to get to, just like there were you know power crystals and other little things that the story revolved around the vehicle design it was all the same sort of idea same types of vehicles as the classic space i think it was basically just a nice modern marriage of parts to an old way of doing things and it was really successful from everything that i've read i think yeah, okay. they can employ an old way of storytelling and an old way of, of doing things just with a new parts palette uh, I think that's what ends up, uh, you know, taking the cake with with a lot of modern themes at the moment. So, like something that, that was popular with, like, really popular with kids, say, ten years ago. Like, hopefully, like, just a bit of a upgrade, and it'll be popular with the kids of the same age, well, or the next generation, sort of thing. Yeah, you're telling the same stories, and you, you know, you, you're telling them the same way. It's just the the, the way that the the sets look and the way that they they play with them uh, yeah. is the update. Hey, and the upshot, um, like one of the more popular um, spacey kind of uh, CMF uh, little you know figs were um, like the pink space, what like yes. pink female yeah. space. Um, there you go. You can have your your, <laughs> your pink space man, oh, space woman. Sorry. Um, you know, and a whole bunch of other things that you can kind of tie into that, but sure. Do, do you, with like uh, how violent video games are and stuff like that, do you reckon if Lego went with like a, a, like a, a theme that would be like violent sort of like army men or something like actually like killing aliens or killing army men or something like that? I know Lego would never do that. Do you reckon that like kids would sort of, grab onto something like that well, if it was more I think the closest they got to that was Galaxy Quest and that was a bit mm. of a bit of a, a hit and miss. Uh, okay. I, I think it's it's all seems to be about the the storytelling. If it's not too convoluted, then people can make up their own stories. If uh, I, I don't want to offend anyone, but if you look at the type of person that is a diehard Bionicle fan they're a very different type of fan to someone who is like a, a you know, a castle fan or a, a space fan. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. Bionicle requires, you know, if you want to get into it, it, there's a lot of story. There's a lot of collecting. There's a lot of lore and history to it. If you come, uh, to, another, if you come to another theme, it's like you can make up all of that. You can make up your, yeah. own, your own stories. If they try to push too much into it, then there's no room for imagination. Yeah. And yeah, this okay. my city is always sold well because yeah. it allows yeah. you to build your own and, and another one I just know firsthand the, the pirates, like the pirates with Dom is like it's like hours and hours of making his own pirate ships and the pirates playing and like doing little missions in the boats and like it, it, it could, like I said, making their own story. I don't know why they 
they kind of got rid of that. Like, remember, um, they had like only a handful of little sets and they, they released a, a pirate ship and stuff like that a few years ago. And then they just went, poof, went. But like, I had no problem, um, you know, selling those um, as a reseller. Um, yeah. They, they did pirates. They always so well. No, no, not the Pirates of the Caribbean. Like I'm the saying they've done Pirates of the Caribbean, but I think the issue there was where were no, the no, no, to it, go with it, that? No, no, it, it but, wasn't. And, and that big ship wasn't really playable, that ghost ship. Like it, that, no, that's, no. that's more a model. It, it wasn't Pirates of the Caribbean. It was Pirates, no, like the no. Lego Pirates, you know, with the yeah, white. I understand you're saying Lego Pirates. I was saying, though, yeah. they visited Pirates with, with, um, with registered IP in Pirates of the Caribbean. But that was real. I don't think that was really aimed at kids at all. That was aimed at AFOLs because who could, yeah, well, who could afford the sets and there was no small <laughs> sets either. And, and or the movie's not really a kid's movie anyway. No. You're not going to get half the joke. Like You, you have yeah. to sort of be reasonably mature to sort of un, understand the jokes in it. Reasonably mature. Uh, uh, reasonably mature, mate. Reasonably. <laughs> reasonably. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> I, um, I just I just brought up a page uh, on Eurobricks from uh, Jamie Burrard. Um, uh, where is it? Here, yeah. um, Big Bang is a, a bit of a quote unquote internal word or, or phrase that Lego has used to describe those themes, like we've been talking about where they've pushed a bunch of info and an extra stuff on top of just the sets themselves. And they, I've got a list of just ones that he said here, and you can tell which ones are the hits and which ones are the misses. So a big bang would be like Ninjago, where it's not just the sets, but they've all got names, they've all got backstories, there's shows, yeah. there's match. Yeah. It was definitely Cards. a hit. Exoforce is the same thing. I'd call that a miss. Power Miners, a, a small hit. Atlantis, a definite miss. Mm, okay. Um, Sad. But you can see those in that lineup, they're all, you know, story driven, character heavy things. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and the ones where it is hit, it is hit absolutely hard in Jago, obviously. Nexo Knights, not quite as much. And so I, obviously that's. Partly into the the market side of it, it's just maybe not what kids wanted at the time. Um, From a lot of the kids in our in our kids Lego club are into Ninjago, and yeah. they love the theme. Mm -hmm. They really love it, and they play it a lot. I think the issue there is, is as as RIB has pointed out several times, where are the small add-on sets? Where are those ones? Where are the pocket money sets? Yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're yeah. stopping yeah. Oh, the starter starter sets. Yeah, and this, you know, Lego's um, IP, you'd expect them to have something that is a set. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they did. In like the other than that, five dollar poly bag. Yeah, yeah this is the thing. There's been there's been that in other markets. Why haven't we seen it in Australia? I mean, yeah. I. I know um, that kids in our club would love Ninjago poly bags. They would. There buy is them. a Ninjago poly bag. Yeah, there are. The, it's, and it's. And it's, it's to, 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 hey? yeah, and it's simple enough for a four-year-old to put together that little wind boat. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one. good. That's one. Yeah, and it's quite playable too. That little set. Yeah. I think with the with the younger kids too, for something to be playable, all those things, they need to have plenty of little. Um, I'm not sure. I've, I haven't seen girls play with the friend sets, but the little accessories for the minifigs are a big thing with young kids. Like having been able to have swords and guns and like actual little things for the minifig to sort yeah. of play with when you when, when you're telling your stories. You know what I mean? Like they need to have a sword and a gun, and like they need to have little things that they can swap up and change. Yeah, it's it's a tool to help progress the story. I remember a 2007 yeah. fantasy era castle. I absolutely lapped that up as a kid um and i remember for christmas for easter for you know a, a treat or something there'd always be those seven dollar or yeah. i think they were seven dollar um little the sets came with one night uh, and the accessories rack 
with like a helmet and two swords or something. Uh, yeah, and the, the little the little brown axes, the axes yeah. and stuff. Well, bear in yeah. mind if you actually have a look at the like the little what the seven dollar box or the fifteen dollar box or even twenty dollar box, there's plenty of accessories in there. You have like a knight's helmet and a knight, and and you know there are some there are the small sets and the junior sets as well, which yeah. are around twenty dollars. There's, there's a few. And that, spe speaking of that too, I remember I had the uh, an Islander set that was like the crocodile cage, and it, and it was only like a three or four dollar set because mine still had the price tag on it. But it, it had sort of the same thing. It had about eight different like eight spears, and then the pirate actually had his sword and a couple of other little things and a peg leg. And then the Islander himself had like the the diff two different head pieces, a shield, and then the um. The, and it had a little box with treasure in it as well. All yeah. that sort of stuff is like in, in a tiny little set. Joe, you used to also be able to buy service packs yep. of, of um, utensils and and um, oh, okay, stuff. Well, like road signs and mm. trees. Oh, and, yeah. um, and they need to come back. Keep saying time and time again. Yeah, yeah. I think if they brought out more stuff like that again. I, I mean, I suppose no, it's, it's counterproductive because you know we want to make the kids buy all the all the sets. <laughs> but but Lego are bringing back smaller service sets now. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing like a little a little tiny roadside boom gate thing with a couple of doodads, and they're bringing yeah. it back. I suppose it's you can't you can't say that people packs are service packs as such because they're really expensive. But mm. they're recognizing that market where. If you go and jam a whole set full of just people and your dude and a little little yeah. accessory like that, as James was saying, they'll sell like hotcakes and they do really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've noticed they've gone it's that got, way with the Minecraft too, with the what mm. is essentially like your your um, army building type set, you know, a bunch of minifigs, a uh, bit also of friends with it. all of them have a separate little animal. Mm. And people collect it for the animals, and as a result, you get yeah. You know, it's also a way of moving sets as well. So, also, well, are, are you saying that Minecraft have animals that are awesome, like chicken, chickens, chicken? No, 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 chickens, James. All oh, right. Uh, <laughs> Ch um, Ch Ch Charm City's just been saying about. Um, the, the castle theme coming back, like what we are just talking about, that would be awesome because you'd have the castles and then like, you'd have the accessories and they'd be able to – I know they don't promote it, but ultimately you'd be able to fight the knights against each other. I would probably buy the whole castle theme if they brought another one back anytime soon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. castles. I castle so regret famous. selling all of the minifigs to my 2007 castle stuff. Yeah, okay. So, what do you have? Did they have knights and the um, the jousting sticks and the horses yep. with like the little knights. bits of armor on their head and all yeah. that stuff? And the bad guys were all of the skeletons, and so there were skeleton uh, horses, and uh, then, then the trolls came in in the next wave, and the dwarves. Do you yeah, think, okay. Do well, you think Nexo Knights was kind of Lego acknowledging that you know mums and dads are watching um, a Game of Thrones and. That's kind of what the kids want. Oh, I reckon it probably was. Yeah. There'd be some sort of reason for them having the sort of slightly more mature type of fantasy uh, world production. Yeah. Um, I, I think mm. you'd be onto something there. Yeah. I think it was. I think it was a nod of trying to um, please two particular. I suppose subsets or genres of collectors. Yeah. So you had the yeah, space okay. genre, and then you had the the castle genre, and they were trying okay. to smash yeah. the two together and just go, "We can have our production, but double our money." They've got two two kids yeah. sliding uh, on the carpet. It's a four by two. Yeah. No, it's a two by four. No, it's a four by two. No, and it's a two didn't, by four. Didn't quite go down that way. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, so, it didn't quite work out. So in the nineties and like a, or early. Yeah, keep going. When, all, when, when they had all those big sets, like the real playable ones, like the Knights and stuff in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s, were they really hammering out the like the city vehicles and stuff at the same time? Like, were they going hand in hand as well? I think from what I remember, I mean, I... Because it, it, it just seems now that they're... Sorry. No, go on. 
No, I'm just saying because like it just seems now with all the juniors and stuff like that as well, they're only really sort of hammering home the city stuff and the vehicles and the police. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's really sort of all, all you've got, and they'll, yeah. they'll they'll have like these little offshoots. I can't speak from first hand because I was born in 1997 and I just inherited a bunch of my brother's older stuff. But from yeah. the research that I've done, uh, looking at like that sort of era for, I think back then it would have been town instead of city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. But it wasn't terribly popular. I know the, the Outback theme was a flop. I don't think anybody no. even remembers that at this point. Um, <laughs> and there were... There was like, there were divers. I think it was reasonably well received. Um, yeah, that sort of stuff was all right. Was, but was, it was, was that the the, the, the di sorry the, the divers that had the little subs and the little arms and stuff? Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, separate from Aquazone stuff, there were like actual real yellow submarines and people in scuba suits and stuff, like realistic diving. Um, Although around that time, I think Lego in general was kind of not as popular. Yeah, yeah, they were so yeah, they throwing sort of bricks to the wall and seeing what stuck to the base plate. Yeah, pretty much. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they went, they went in space. Which means that that's a hard decade to compare to nowadays. Yeah. It's uh, all, all I, a lot of I good mean, to say things that worked and not, oh, but... City in that has always been you know, a measure of popular because you know, it's always been a staple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Town, town has always been. Yeah. Lego land and town. Henry, um, Henry just popped up with what about an industrial thing? I think. Um, yeah. That's what my mining is, isn't it? No. Yeah, no. I think on another level, though, Lego no. also tries to be very green with their themes and stuff. So, industrial. Yeah. Yeah. Solar farm. There you go. Yeah, I did. Um, they did have a partnership with Vestas at one point. Yeah. Oh, they did. Oh, for the wind turbines. Yeah, for the, they did um, two sets, I believe, with Vestas. Yeah. yeah okay. And then they I, also um, paired up I, with. Um, but in back then, they were doing. They were basically selling themselves to the devil. I didn't care who they could get fed with, as long as they could get partnerships uh, and sign contracts while, for money. <laughs> while we're on this topic, can I can I just clear up any confusion that you can bring back to your relevant communities about the green bricks? What's happening with them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. The sky isn't falling in and you're not uh, going to have to replace all of your old plants and all of your, your old bricks with new plant-based things. What they're doing is that the bricks are going to be chemically identical. The only difference is the place or the way that they're sourcing the ethanol for the Poly, somebody help me with the plastic name. Poly, Poly polyethylene. That's the one. Polyethylene is used for the slightly flexible bricks, like the plants and the, the weeds and yeah, yeah, those sorts of things, uh, where they can't mm -hmm. use ABS and where they can't use rubber. So those things, the ethanol in the polyethylene, is purely just being sourced from a different place. It's instead of being. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. No. So, so, so the actual color and stuff itself won't be affected. Nothing is going to change. You are not. They're, 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 they're just anything. using renew, renewables for some of the manufacturing process. Yeah, you're not going to notice a difference at all. They're chemically identical, and I want to hammer that oh. point home. It's still yeah. ethanol. It's still polyethylene. They're just finding the materials from a different place. Yeah, that's, and it that's will all be all the cheaper too. So. Yes. So. If, if people you know are worried about the effect that this change is going to have, you need to slap them in the face and tell them to get a hold of themselves because they're not going to notice a difference. If they do notice a difference, they're either seeing things or they're uh, looking too hard into two different batches because nothing's going to change. I, 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 think, I think maybe maybe that little cartoon that a lot of people would have seen where Just they sort of... face one of those. Yes. Yeah, just the way they brought that little cartoon across, how they were saying that there's going to be plant plant products in every well, yeah, like that's... piece of. I think people yeah. you sort of, of watch that and you're like, oh my god, they're making it different. 
that's just good marketing because now every person that isn't a Lego fan, just the Facebook comes, oh. are just going to be like, oh, it's made out of hemp now, dear. Yeah, Girl, that's kind of nice. Mark the Lego. It's going to be Lego now. Yeah, and if I could have a dollar for every time I saw an article on green plastic Lego, gosh, I'd be rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, uh, from, a, from a marketing point of view, like, no matter how they tried to put a spin on it or how they worded it, I'm sure the outcome would have been the same. Everyone would have been freaking out, going, oh, no, they're going to change it, they're going to change it, until eventually the smoke cleared and everyone went, oh, hang on a minute, no, it's not quite what we thought it was. We've now got a bit more information. Yep. Because I think the Lego have been customer base is going for quite to quite a while, haven't they? <laughs> oh, they've been, they've been involved in that, on that bandwagon for right. ages. But... <laughs> well, why not go so... to a hemp-based plastic? It's nothing new. It's, it's an old technology. We can use it. And I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, one other thing, with, with the, like, different themes, now, do, do they still make, like, the advertising campaigns for, like, mainstream sort of morning kids TV like they used to? Like, where they used to have the actual, like, bit, like, ads with, like, kids playing with the set and stuff like that? Or is it all just sort of on, online, online, the advertising? From what I've seen personally, it's a bit chop and change with when they actually run ads. I've seen some very sporadic, like, cartoon uh, time slot ads are very yeah. infrequently. Like if a major new city theme or something has come out, I haven't seen any recently. Okay. But any time that I've ever, ever seen TV I, ads, I it's see always been at like 8pm. Yeah. Uh, they bom- they're bombarding people on YouTube with those ads now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, because a lot of kids are on YouTube watching stuff to do with toys yeah. and Lego. They've had to change their tactics. Oh, okay. Every oh, video sure. is kids-related. Somehow you'll see a Lego ad. Yeah. I've oh, if okay. It's not sitting like, like, with friends, a friends, episode of friends. Whatever the latest crazy. Yeah, okay. All right. I did notice. Okay. Oh, no, I was just going to say, because a, a, a lot of kids do watch the – because the toy unboxing and stuff so big mm. now, like Kid City and stuff like that. So I can understand why. Yeah. I did notice uh, some years ago they used to run Lego ads at about 6 p.m., which was perfect because it was the time that kids got up to go to bed. All right, it's 6 p.m., go go to bed, go leave, get out of here so the parents can have some rest. Um, and then, you know, the Lego ads would run. Mm. The kids would be up getting around ready to go to bed. <laughs> And the parents would see it and rush for the mute button before the kids yeah. heard it. And then that was like a, an automatic conversation there. Oh, I like that. Can I get that? Maybe not. Maybe for Christmas. Maybe for your birthday. But it was like a, ta- it was a tactical insertion of uh, Lego marketing. They knew exactly when they were planning on doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? It works. Oh yeah, it definitely did for me. I only realised it when I when I became older and I realised uh, what that time slot was. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, can I interject for a moment, Adam? Yes. Is, Adam, you? Adam is saying, "Who am I? I'm just the host." I think Joe's the host tonight. Um, Adam's Adam. Oh. Been signalling that it's past his bedtime. So, bye, bye, Adam. See you, buddy. See you later. See ya. Bye. Taking forever to leave. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All good. So, so, sorry, sorry, Sheree, I'm probably talking a bit too much, mate. I just haven't been on for ages. Yeah, no, you're just excited. You're just like, I have all the things to say. I have all these things to chat about. I haven't had, I haven't been able to talk to anyone about them. Yeah, well, I haven't, yeah. literally. Obi-Wan's not been streaming lately either because he's moving house. Yeah, I, I think I think Dave will be giving it a miss anyway for a while, I think. So. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's stressful moving house, and then you've got to wait for your internet to come back on. And yeah, and, uh, I, and 
Uh, I work nearly every Saturday, so it's yeah. I only get really one chance. Yeah, and it's like add add normal home life on top of all that, and it's a bit overwhelming. Yeah, it's all good. Never mind. But hey, I'm not complaining. It's just when I can't get a word in edgewise. It's it's been a while since I've had this many people on the panel. I, I think we could have gotten on one more if we tried because everyone would be talking at the same time. But it's fun. It's good. All good. So at least it's, it's been talking the whole time, I suppose. Oh, some of those odd boys pauses where I'm like, oh, right. So, so you can't get you guys to shut up and then all of a sudden you're like. Phew. Oh, come <laughs> on. We do good goldfish impersonations. Do you have your silences all at once? What the heck? <laughs> J- James, have you have you got a shirt with Magic Carp on it? Yes, yes, I do. It's awesome. Well, well why wouldn't you have? I'd rather one with Gyarados on it. I reckon. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Mad- if if I was a Pokemon, oh, I'd be Magic Carp. Fundamentally useless, and just waiting until I evolve into something better. <laughs> until you realise that you still have Splash. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that that would be something interesting if Lego was ever to make it in Pokemon. Uh, can you imagine the licensing fees? Whoa. Yeah. You think yeah, yeah Disney are huge. So those did... mega constructs has had the license for so long. Yeah, are, are they the guys that make the nano blocks? Uh no, they no. they have it's Lego. Blocks, Nintendo just, and Nintendo are just oh, um, oh, okay. But they make like Lego scale um, weird shaped Pokemon. Okay, there you go. I had a mate of mine who is like a diehard EV fan and he hates any brick building toys just because I talk about it too much. And so <laughs> for his first day last year, I got him the Mega Constructs EV. And awesome. Cracked the biggest smile, and then realised what I had done, and then that smile left his face. <laughs> Is that you? Are pure evil. Was that the day he stopped being a friend? Oh no, no, he's good, good friend still. He's like the jig is up. I know why you did this. Oh, like he liked are, it. He built like, it in the car, so he couldn't like, have hated oh, it. Oh, oh. Yes, you're not inherently evil. I'd, I'd like to think not. Um, so, while we're on licenses, what do we think of the Infinity War sets, this current wave? Expensive. Yeah, that wasn't but a fact. You know, you know what? It, it doesn't matter what what license you put on. At the moment it says Marvel or DC, it's automatically expensive, trust me. Yeah. As a person who buys sets only for figs, for the pure purpose of displaying and nothing else, I buy the sets, the figs go into packets, and they sit in a drawer for one show every year, and that's it. Yeah. I I think um I think I've spent more money on DC and Marvel superhero sets than I have on any other Lego this year. Yeah. Well, it's been more often, isn't it? Like. Yeah, and they they keep releasing more obscure characters, which is great. It's awesome, but you don't like it from a perspective of collecting. Then you got to buy more sets. The the uh, the the tact I think they did for the um, the gauntlet was pretty interesting though. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I think that was but a really did, great did, ploy to get everyone to buy the complete yeah. sort of roll of them. I think that was pretty good. Did did you guys think that the Thanos was sort of impressive, or do you thought it like it was basically just like the Hulk mold recolored? Yeah. Well, everybody oh. was annoyed when they first saw the pictures of it. All of the marketing for Thanos for this so far had been him, like, just in his tank top and uh, and stretch pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so people, God, sorry. people, <laughs> people, people were rightly yeah. annoyed when Lefty they had basically just top. recolored and reprinted the, like, uh, comic Thanos mold <laughs> from a while back. But in yep. the latest trailer, uh, spoiler alert, if people are worried about trailers, he has all of his armor on. And so it made a lot more sense to have the helmet 
in the mold is like you know still there and so that sort of saved it yeah sure, okay. that's why they could have done it but um to, uh, I think that to be honest i prefer i prefer the space space thanos yes out of yeah the, that uh, looked pretty good what's that galactic space mission or whatever the hell they called it yeah with the the jet. The one with space iron man and mm. captain okay. marvel that was i think that iron man out of the two is the better one yeah. for uh thanos yeah. That's me personally. So, I mean, now is it is that Doctor Strange figures? You have to buy that like a hundred and eighty dollars set to get that Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. mm, and I, I, I know. Um, but I, I've looked online. I, I you can, it's it, even that figs about twenty five bucks. It, it's insane. Some of the price of the figs. Um, I f- I found like I do sell some figs, and that's what the selection is there. And yeah, it, it is it is tough to justify, you know, buying you know three hundred bucks worth of sets to get a couple of figs. Um, Look, it's already being rumoured right now that in this new line of um, anniversary minifigs that's coming out, that the policeman's going to go fifty bucks instantly. I mean, I can see it going a lot more than that. Or more, or more. I reckon, I reckon you can only be able to zero to that before the end of the year's out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, in which case, I'll be selling all mine. <laughs> Ch- Ch- Charm City's just said that all the Infinity Wars um, lines are already 20% off at Walmart. Yeah, I was yeah, just going to on that. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it surprised me. I, I wonder if that it, would that just be to boost the sales a little bit coming into the movie? So it's sort of yeah, like they're hoping maybe it snowballs? I, I think also it's part of the fact that they're afraid that if the movie doesn't quite do as well as it is, they're going to be stuck with all this stock that they've bought on the back of this yeah. hyped movie that uh, uh, okay. the last Infinity Wars, it didn't do well either. Yeah, okay. People are going, oh, is this Infinity Wars going to be another flop like the last one or is this one going to buck the trend and be good? The last one? Cause oh, yeah, you're talking about Justice League, the, uh, I think. The leader. Justice League leader. Yeah, ju- yeah. Justice League. Justice, Justice League. Justice League was a flop. Yeah, they 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 int- keep introducing all of these characters to try and build up the MCU so they can go and do all these other sort of add on bolt on movies. And the last few haven't done so well. So the they fan community is the fan community is a bit sort of like, eh, it's no good. Well, Black Panther did a little well. A few people watched Black yeah. Panther, so I, I think <laughs> I, I think just yeah. one or two. Just a couple. It's just a bummer and his kids, yeah. Um, yeah, Who's I, he? I think, oh, <laughs> some guy. Uh, <laughs> it's just every, oh, everybody weird. blaming him for everything, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I reckon he will do quite well. So, how, how, how many Black Panther sets did they bring out to like for the new movie? Three. three. I think it was. I think it was two. It was three. The, oh, two. The Jess thingy. Um, yeah, and the, the um, rhino, and there was another. Oh, okay. also, um, Wasn't there another one? And there was some crazy like fortress thing, and it had a Black Panther in it. Yeah, well, there was that. three. Oh. There was like there was a third yeah, was one true. because you got Black Panther, then you had the jungle, then you had that rhino one, which had both of the the good Panther and the bad Panther, or the blue one and the yellow. I don't the mine one, one, yeah. Oh, no, and no, then it was you two. had. The fortress one, I think you're thinking of, is from Infinity War. He's in that. Yeah, it was the. Yeah, there you go. uh, Yeah, there was two Black Panther sets. What's the chip, the ship, and the mine rhino scene? Uh, Thor Ragnarok had two. They were both ship. Both sets were ship. Summon the Google Man. Yes. Yep, two Uh Thor Ragnarok sets as well. I'm glad that they only released two of each of those because I don't think either of them have been going. Terribly well. No, nah, they're rubbish. Yeah. But I'm glad they have them because they're some cool minifigs. And yeah, oh, the, the, fig, the, the figs are the highlights of all I've, those sets. But I've found that that seems to be the go with all of the Marvel sets of recent. The figs are what make the set, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah, nothing there's, there's any good outside of, of that. Quite placed on mini figs right across the board, and it, that's again with the starter packs. The starter sets are like two, three, four mini figs and very little bricks, and it's sort of 
Yeah, I'd like to see maybe a one, some more one mini fig stuff done at a lower price with a but few more bricks in them. We've got to oh, remember man. that that's what kids play with. Oh, of course they play with the mini fig. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. But um, another thing though is coming about that I can see that when people have so many mini figs, we're not seeing as much of the fact where kids are taking their mini figs apart and swapping them around as much, which is what I've noticed. They tend yeah. to just build a whole range of them rather than actually custom make their own mini figs. Um, mm. yeah. and, and again, though, I've, I've seen the point too, where like today we're down at, um, I'm Rick James Bricks, about 10 kids romped in with four parents and that's the first thing they headed for was the Bill Dre mini fig mm, thing. Big bar. Yeah. Mini fig I was going to say... Jumped on it. With, 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 nice with, 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 with the younger kids, if they're not so much, if they're sort of not up to like the collecting sort of thing yet, they're still pretty big on mixing and matching mini yeah. figs, man. Yeah, but I think this is the, the thing with the, the DC, Marvel, all that sort of thing. I mean, it's not my thing, but I don't really care. I'm not, I, I, just, I don't poo poo it for any reason or anything like that. But I just see, like, how many Spider Mans can you have? How many Iron Mans can you have? It's like, yes, it's almost at the point where you've got 20 or something like that with different, slight, slightly differences. We you can actually use it to make very good stop motion movies. But, <laughs> but, in, but, but in Iron Man's defense, every Iron Man is slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. In in his defense, Spider Man. I mean, no matter how many costumes you put on it, it's still just a pea and lipstick. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. well, it's, it's different. It's different ball game, I suppose, because it, the, the, the character is a character. It's yeah. sort of only going. It's only going to be known one way. As soon as you sort of change him from his suit, well, he's something, somebody different, isn't he? Mm. He's Peter Parker. I, I mean, that's where I think. That's where I think Iron Man is. It's a bit unique. I mean, I understand what you're saying, Dazza. Like, you've got to do it with a red helmet and a gold face. Like, how many times can you do that? Wow. You're putting yeah. some printing on it and then charging them 45 bucks for the privilege. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's awesome. But, I mean, like, I have, like, they've sort of thought outside the box and they've gone back and sort of redone a lot of his suits. Um, so they've got, like, a space suit. They've got an underwater suit. They've got a... What other suit have they got? Sorry, they've got, like, six or seven different... The Super Centurion was uh, colours. the um, poly bag for a game pre-order. Yeah, Centurion, the self Centurion. That's that's an expensive suit, that one. Whew. Yeah, I'm glad I got that, like, just legitimately with the game. <laughs> Didn't want to get that second hand. Yeah, no, I've done that before. I walked in and I grabbed the... Um, F- I, I walked into eBay. I walked into... Is it EB Games? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, GameStop or whatever they call it. Anyway, I walked in there and I saw they had the Finn poly bag mm-hmm. that you bought with uh, X- Xbox yeah. PlayStation game. I, I don't even know which one it is anyway. I don't own a console. So I walked in there. I bought it and it was on special. It was like 20 bucks off or something. And I'm like, sweet. So it was 40 bucks. And I'm thinking, well, if you spent... And I looked up, I did a quick calculation and I found it online for about 25 bucks. So I'm thinking, well, if I can sell back the game brand new, unopened, for 20 bucks, then or for, for even $25, then I pretty much bought a $15 fig and I'm a home and home. So I walked in there. I know they're watching I, this. I bought it, scanned it, opened it up, taught the minifigure out and said, oh, can I return this? And she's like, I'm sorry. Don't you want it anymore? You just bought it, and I'm like, no, no, I want to return the game. I don't want anything. I just want the fig. I want to keep this, and you know, the rest. And just sort of sat there for about ten minutes with a jaw on the floor, going, um, I, I don't know if I don't, I don't know if we can take this back unless it's not pre-owned. I'm like, well, I bought it, I own it, and I'm giving it back. And she's like, so do you want a refund on the whole thing? And I'm like, no, no, I want the figure. I just want you to give me back the money for the game. She said, but you haven't used it, and I had no intention of using it. <laughs> But so, well, so she just I, didn't I understand standing, what you meant. Yeah, I was standing there arguing with her for about 10 minutes saying, I want to give you back this game. Just just return it. Like, just give me back. The, I want to trade it in. And she's like, but you haven't taken it home. I'm like, I know that. But we sat there for about 10 minutes just <laughs> arguing. And uh, the store manager... You should have done that. No, 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 no. What you should have done is you should have just opened it up, closed it in front of her and said, look, it's used now. No, just let me just stop or lap and then come back. I pulled it out, opened the case up, took the disc out, put it on the counter, picked the disc back up, put it back in the case, closed the case, grabbed the box, 
hoiked it over my shoulder. Like I literally threw it in the store over my shoulder and put the game back on there and then scratched it all on the counter and said, look, it's used. Will you take it back now? <laughs> the manager, the manager's sitting there looking at me going, what are you doing? I'm like, she won't take it back. She's like, I, I, why I, won't you take it back? I wouldn't have. Why, why, why won't you take it back? And then the, the chick behind the counter, like she's a young girl, and she's like, I won't take it. It's not that I won't take it back. He just bought it. <laughs> and what's the problem? And what's the problem with that? And she's Do like, not he get, just bought I'm it. a Lego person, not a game person. He just bought it. So I was sitting there talking to the manager, and then I'm like, I just want to return it. And she's like, so you just bought it? I'm like, yeah, I bought it for the figure. And then I'm shaking this plastic poly bag on. I bought it for this figure. And she's like, oh, oh, why don't you just say so? Like, oh we probably got some of them at the back that you have. <laughs> oh, what? And I'm going, what? You're Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she's looked at it and she's gone, oh, hang on. No, that's an explosion. No, we wouldn't have anything at the back. And I'm thinking, mm. at the back, show me this out, out the back the that back. you were speaking of. <laughs> I want to see this out the back. But, yeah, no, it's, uh-huh. it's just bizarrely odd. But figures are getting so friggin' expensive, it's ridiculous. Mm. It's, it's funny at EB when they say out the back because in, in reality, like, out the back is probably as small as, like, this little tiny, like, it looks like a cupboard that they sort of walk back off into, yeah. and they seem, and then they seem to sort of just like reappear with like anything you can ask for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Mary Poppins' bag. Yeah, reaching around, going, oh, what, 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 oh, oh, look, look, I pulled out yeah. a PlayStation. <laughs> Well, that's not what you're after. Hang on a minute, I'll put them back in, and then they pull out something else. It's like a lucky dip. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's crazy. I was just like, yeah. Some people, but minifigs, it would be awesome. I would love to see a secondhand minifig trading trading day where people that were just keen on minifigs could do like a sell on a swap and do like a swap, mate. That'd be pretty awesome. And just minifigs because I reckon you would find people coming out by the truckload. Mind you, you'd also see the dudes. I think I saw a post, I think it might have been on Ozblog. From a lady who had a Ziploc bag full of like just random oh, shitty yeah. figures that had been, that had been absolutely butchered. Like so I think there might have been four random. out of them that were complete. There might have yeah. been four of them that were maybe complete. And she wanted six hundred and fifty bucks for a Ziploc bag. And oh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah. I know, I know what Lego. I know what Lego is worth, and what no Lego people. I know what Lego people's yeah, are worth. Lego. Lego people. Yeah, I know Lego people. Yeah. And I, and I was just like, well, <laughs> that was just a straight up troll post. That one. That was a straight up troll post. It had to be. Oh my god. Oh my god. But you. But you do. But you do meet people like that. You just. You do. And they're like. Oh well. Like oh, the woman so was, and they're so special. The woman that was selling jars of Lego on one of our local buy swap cells, and you could only, if you were lucky, if you could spot three pieces of genuine Lego in the jar. Now the rest of it was um, off-brand stuff, and you get off-brand stuff, but parts that only oh. those off-brands make. Oh, here we go. But the funny thing no, is, you were um... like thirty bucks a jar, and it wasn't even like fifty pieces of Lego. It wasn't even fifty pieces of off-brand stuff in the jar. Yeah, but you do, you do see like people that will just they'll they'll tell you it's all genuine lego so you actually gonna have a look and you're like oh yeah there's not genuine lego no no it's all lego and i'm like mm, no it's not like, oh, what would you know uh, <laughs> well, yeah, say that to you like well actually yeah. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny that i, I probably should know because I'm, I'm coming around your house to buy your random bucket of trash that you <laughs> oh, i have a bedroom i have a i have a bedroom full of this um so-called plastic legos that you're selling <laughs> and um and if 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 you do know me and you've been in town long enough you know who i am and i have a legos number plate Oh, is that your car? Is that your car, is it? Yeah. Oh. So you reckon it's not Lego then? So well um the, the, the printed word mega block sort of gives it away. Oh, I thought it was all Lego. Is that why it was so cheap? Probably. We live a play another day. 
You just you feel like you feel like that person, like. So, um, do do you have leg Legos Legos with like a like L E G O five? No, I've actually got a three and a half thousand dollar number plate that has oh. a Lego Lego guy. It's got Lego guy written on it. Well, that's 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 really awesome, man. It, it's all so it's you all are you, seven 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 a seven digit one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got a seven digit how, Legos number plate. No, it's not yes. double G. Sorry. How, how, no how double G on mine? Because uh, I, I was trying to. Th- I was trying to think of something the other day when they because they brought out the cheaper versions now where you can mix letters like three letters and three numbers together to make like mm. a cheaper one. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's I think uh, Billsy got Billsy got one. He got B like B one L Y and then a five. Yeah. Or however you spell Billsy, but anyway, yeah. In Victoria, we have um, heart plates. They have like a heart in the in the combination. And yeah. someone from Mugs had um, I Art Lego. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and that plate was ridiculous money at the time. And it yeah. sold because it's been around for a while and traded hands. And I think it sold for something like $1,800 last time it traded hands. So, yeah. No, nah, they're yeah. not cheap. Like, number plates. Oh, but that particular plate so. costs you per year to keep it um, current. And, but the actual cost of, like, the people that own these plates can actually trade them. And yeah, no, the last time they sold it was eighteen hundred dollars, and it's thing it still cost you a thousand dollars a year to keep it current. Just cost a fortune. It, like people go out and buy, like when when new model cars are made, people will go out and buy the first number plate with that model car in there, and then just buy it even though they don't own the car, and then sell it to well, a it's three an years later for like ridiculous funny. Oh, no. you, 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 oh, yeah, you look at um, the the parts trader magazines and stuff like that. Some number plates are worth like fifty grand. Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, but easy. like, you, your your car is really that obscure. You have to tell me what it is, and you're driving a Prado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it happens to. Um, I won't say the best of it, but but some of us. <laughs> it happens to you, Phil. It happens to you. <laughs> oh look, no, I'm not to me. My number plate is not obscure too. at all. And you can. <laughs> You can read Birdo because there's two Birdos in the car, or, or it's Birdos. It's just, you know, we're bird watchers, and bird watchers are known as Birdos. So you read two as an S, and are they? something else, those, but. Um... Now, okay, all right. Hey, look, look, geocacher is too, too damn expensive a place. <laughs> What's that? Again, you, you could use that a second time, but. Sorry. Um, disconnected. <laughs> I, mu- I must admit, you occasionally get some strange looks from people like mm, birdos. Mm, I don't know. Is, is, is that what your number plate says, Darren? It says birdo too. Oh, okay. Birdo <laughs> <laughs> um, like, one? Well, we could have actually there. got birdo one, but we wanted the two to read as an S, and so it's birdos. You're not just diehard Super Mario Two fans. No. <laughs> there's a there's a guy. A, one of the guys that works has bevies, bevies like as in the drinks, bevies. As in, as in beer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's tragic. Go okay, to the garden with some bevies with the boys. Bevies. <laughs> that's a bit darling. Gonna go for some bevies with the lads. <laughs> Yeah, it would be shandy. That'd be like, oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually quite funny because they're two brothers and it's on a Nissan Micra. Oh! And then one of the <laughs> no, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, but no, listen, but one brother, the older brother, is literally like six foot four, and and the 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 older brother is seven foot. He has to duck. He has to duck to get in and out of the crib room, like get in and out of the door. He, yeah. like he's, oh, no. he's like he's like the mountain. He's and he massive. Might a micro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He hops out of a micro. He he he, he car lives with his brother in the micro, but his <laughs> his car's at a, a F three fifty because he, he rocks up in his yeah, big right. F three fifty sometimes. Yeah, that makes sense. But the, but the moment he sits there and idles at lights, he weighs he wastes like forty bucks in petrol. That's why he doesn't drive it. Yeah, yeah. The eye, but the just, eye just, even just eyes. even just watching, like he like just watching him get out of the microman, like he's that, like he's just a oh, large, large. Take large video person. sometime, dude, and share it. That's yeah. 
Just like Hightower uh, yeah. in, in Police Academy, ripping the front seat out so you can sit in the back seat. Do, 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 do you guys, have you guys seen Happy Gilmore? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Do, 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 do you know the boss out? Like he, he's, yeah, his boss out of Happy Gilmore, He that, that, that's literally what, what the old mate looks like. The, the big guy out of Happy Gilmore. <laughs> like, no joke. Are you making, are you making yeah. fun of me because of my car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, far out. Oh, dear. Yeah, you do see some funny number plates around on occasion. Though. Some people are clever. They come up with some clever ones. But, um, yeah. We have um, someone that's got Keisha as one of our geocaching friends out of Keisha. Um, but, yeah. but I reckon the funniest number plates I ever saw... I was in standing outside Wentworth one day on the side of the road and there's three identical grey nomad setups coming through. Three identical four-wheel drives, same colour, same aftermarket mag wheels on them, three absolutely identical caravans. The first number plate comes through, lost. The second one comes through, lost two, and the third one came through, lost as. Lost as. <laughs> And they always travel in that convoy organisation and give back those number plates one after the other. Sure, it wasn't like um, the film crew of um, Lost. You know, all Aussie Adventures or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand no, that. that. No, it would be They'd all been to school Fine together, course. retired together, and that was just their little like, in joke. So good on them. Yeah. <laughs> good on them. Having a fun. <laughs> so. Oh, it's eleven thirty. So I'm gonna you're, um. You're right. You're right, mate. I, I was just gonna say I might love you as, and leave you as guys. I, 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 am gonna, I'm gonna say I will. I'm gonna attempt to get up for the sunrise and take a photo in the morning because I'm yeah, not working. Yeah. So, it's um. I, I've actually got to think of a Lego because I've got an action figure shot set up, but I've got to think of a um, a Lego, a Lego one. So. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Uh, okay. We'll see you that. Good to see you, guys. Jane. Yeah, Thanks. hopefully catch up again soon, guys. Cheers, mate. So. Look forward Bye. to the peace. See ya. So, ABC, what's um, been your inspiration, Manny? I know we, we sort of got off topic here for a while. What's been your inspiration and who's inspired you? Who's inspired me? What do you mean? Is there any builder that inspired you? It's a loaded question. It's a very loaded question. Be careful, ABC. He's baiting you. Okay, okay. Let let me me answer this as diplomatically as possible. Oh, hello. I try not to be influenced by what other people are doing. Because you I'm like not very good at copying man. and I'm not very good at emulating. I'm not good at following instructions. Oh. Okay, then. All right. All right. Then not, not, not none of that. Then. Who, uh, in who it, okay, built you okay. like then? In a general sense, um, as far as learning things and stuff like that, um, my inspiration for learning things is teaching others at the same time. Yeah, cool. Because cool. Uh, I came into this hobby fresh. And not really having touched Lego much at all as a child, yeah. uh, and and being overwhelmed by how, like how much I wanted to make but had no idea where to start, uh, having to go and and, and research, uh, sharing that research with other people. Yeah. Well, no. It's having seen a lot of your builds and the way you build, you you really sort of. The tactile side of it's a big thing for you, you reckon? Um, I'm, I'm more of a, like, I come from more like an, uh, I, I don't profess to be an artist, but I come from more of an art perspective of it, that um, colour, shapes, textures. Yeah. Like, I put together something that makes me feel happy about it, not necessarily to make it look like something that's from the real world. Yep. Um, I might take some cues from the real world, but then I'll yeah. you know make it ridiculously bright and not realistic at all. But that's part of it. That's part of the fun. I, that's oh, yeah. what you did. On. Where, where are you pulling your inspiration from? And you've pretty much covered it. That's that's what I was trying. Oh to yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, um, 
my major inspiration is is the colors that I find, and like I get some pretty random colors of Lego. Yeah, um, <coughs> come into my possession. Well, oh, oh, there was a there was a very strategic. Who was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. so oh in color. If you want. Oh. If you want ABC, I could, if you commissioned me, I could remake another copy of my colour chart. Uh, I'd be happy to source all the parts for you. Oh. Only took me uh, six months or something. Oh, that's I'm sure I could do it quicker this time. Six months sounds short. Yeah, no, no, right at all. <laughs> that would be actually... How many, how many colours? Uh, I lost count at about two hundred. Yeah, yeah, someone did one the other day at the show where it seemed. Where I think what, what did that one have James roughly about a hundred colours, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a little bit less than two hundred plus. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I didn't um, count it to be honest. I mean, mine stretches into like Modulax colours and strange one-offs and things. So it's yeah, it's. Actually, yeah, it would have been just under 100 because it was two columns on a 48 by 48 plate. So you would have been oh, yeah. 98. Cool. Oh, by the way, uh, Darren, I think I might have made your sig fig. Oh. Hang <laughs> on. Let me have a look. Um, yeah, hang on. I'm just going to put you on. <laughs> Give me. Um, yeah. a bit well, it's a berserker. It, it's it's a berserker dwarf, yeah, with two Thor hammers, with a with a Gimli helmet. So it, I it's a, right. and it's got like um, like chain mail and a belt underneath it. So I figured, yeah, oh, it's like when we were at um, Seymour last weekend displaying a couple of the girls, a couple of the younger girls that come to look at the exhibition about four times during the day. Commented on my mini fig, and I've gone. They've gone. What's that for? And I've gone. That's my sig fig, and they've gone. And they, what do you mean? Fig? I said, well, it's meant, made to look a little bit like me, and they've gone. But you don't wear a, wear a winged helmet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Oh. <laughs> okay, but there you go. Don't. You just go and buy one. <laughs> I can. I'll just. Yeah. And anyway. For what I was explaining before, can you see my screen? Oh, no. Uh, sorry. I clicked on James. Uh, let's have a look at Bales. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. That's, that's the print that I'm getting done. Uh, I whipped that up on Illustrator. I'm going to get that done on some figs, and that will be my sig fig once but I which, own the jacket as well. Which version, though? I like the sash. The one with the sash or one without? I, I think the final design, somebody suggested I do just like a lapel pin with the five colours. And so I might do yeah. no sash but a lapel pin with the ribbon instead. Well, yeah, no, like, a, like, a, um, like a military. Would that fit there? Yeah, I suppose yeah, it would. Like, like a military, you know, medals or something. Yeah. Um, how do they go printing on the arms? I have seen some printing on the arms. Maybe a stripe on the sleeve or on the cuff, maybe. No, maybe. Uh, the person that I go through, I don't think they can do that yet. Right. Um, yep. But I don't mind. Yeah, I know some can, some can't. That's all, but yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a, a, in the five colours on the leg, maybe? Just to you know, have, you have some, some have the, the stripe on the uh, leg? Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, just just another thought. I mean, I like it, mate. I, as we've discussed it before, I do really like that. That's a cool sig fig. Mm. Well, you seem to my to have, inspiration um, before. Had a really full-on stream tonight. It's been really great so far. Yeah, I'm glad I came back. Yeah, no, cheers, man, for dropping in. Been great. I'm glad you. I'm glad you popped in. Yep. I, I really, really love that. One year. Congrats. Yeah. Another round of applause. Yay. James, James is bashing up something in the background. Yes, James <laughs> needs to be muted. Um, do you yeah. want me to talk about what inspires me before we go? Oh, yeah, Phil. Yeah. Oh, we've had so many bodies on this. Bloody panel tonight that I skipped over you. I'm sorry. 
No, that's alright. I ain't giving away me. I'm here. No, no, no. Week, what so... inspires you, Phil? So Phil. the thing that inspires me is my community. My my community inspires me to build Lego, um, and it can be anything from people that I work with through to the kids that come up to my wife and ask about whether or not the Lego man can come and help them build something on the weekend at the house, which is a little bit creepy. I must admit, I'm not quite into that space and I'm like, ah, oh. kind of cool. I, I but, don't know if yeah. I can do that. It's kind of cool. And I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe you can bring it to, um, to a birthday party and I can sit down with all the other kids there while I'm looking after my daughter. I'm not, not that way I'm fine. But um, yeah. for me, my community and giving back to my community <clears throat> inspires me. I started, I suppose, really looking a little bit more ahead because my daughter originally was my reason for getting back into Lego. So that we would buy Lego and it'd be, yeah, cool, I bought some Lego, sweet. My daughter builds it. Um, and then we were doing Real Life for Life, again, trying to get back to the community and we had all this Lego there and I said, oh, it would be really cool if we could go and host a display to get people to come to our tent as a fundraiser. So I uh, originally did that. And then when I was there, the local show, agricultural show committee asked me if I would come to their show and do the same thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, radio too easy. So I did that and they said, oh, we'll, we'll pay you for it. I said, I oh, don't worry about paying me for it. If you want to pay me for it, you can give money to the charity that, that I'm sponsoring. And I said, yeah, no, we'll do that. So every year I go there and I do that and they give me some, they make a donation to a charity. Um, and that's sort of what keeps me collecting. Like, oh, I said that I went and bought all of, a lot of the superhero sets. Um, I buy them for the figs just for that show. So it costs me a lot of money, but they inspire me to keep going. I end up amassing all this random grey and hues of grey and hues of dark blue. I found a lot of superheroes Lego has blue in it. Yeah. Um, so I've amassed a lot of that over the arm. And what inspires me to build is anything railroad. I love railroads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So whether it's American, Australian, English, it doesn't really matter. I have a preference for American, but anything railroad inspires me. So that that's sort of what really drives me to build. So any particular like steam or diesel or, or anything? Or... For, me, it's, for me, it's modern diesel. I love modern diesel. I don't like modern um, Australian diesel trains. I think, I think they're just boxes with wheels, to be honest. But, well, aren't they all? Well, well not, not, not to a railroad person, they're not. But, well, well, uh, well, yeah, they're... but I, I, I like comparing, say, like a Mercado or a Pacific. Yeah. To I mean, modern diesel, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. for me... Or a big boy. For me, my, my passion is modern diesels, anything in uh, the GE range, so any of the EMD products is really good. Um, I don't mind steam. I love steam too. Um, 50 steam is really beautiful. It's very yeah. art deco, very, very flowing. This, this oh, yeah, curves cool. it. Green can... liners are awesome. You can look at some some fifty steam trains, and they don't look like your conventional steam engine, where they're big and black, and they're just dirty. They look like these beautiful slick pieces of machines. Um, yeah. But I, I suppose really anything from the fifties really interests me. It doesn't matter if it's trains or cars. Buildings interest me from the fifties. Um, so the the new diner, I love the new diner. It's it's very fifties American, sixties even I suppose, but uh, the architecture is very fifties. Um, I love teal, the new color teal. That, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, if they yeah, made yeah. a, uh, if they made a train in teal, I would build that straight away. So would I. <laughs> yeah, they're, um, they're amazing how many people build really good Art Deco buildings and Art Deco inspired stuff. There's just something about that style that's just yeah. it's very striking. And mm -hmm. all the modern right Lego term. parts really lend themselves to it too. We got so many good curved parts. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't mind like concrete brutalism either when you talk about architecture. That's really interesting. So it's very, very Russian sort of very big, huge sort of uh, Chicago has a lot of concrete brutalist buildings in it. Um, it's just real angular, very, very 3D, very textural. Um, I, I like that sort of style of building too. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
I mean, I love anything trains. I could talk about trains till till the cows come home. I mean, anything big. I like I like big things. I don't know what it is. I like anything big and Lego stuff. So the bigger, the bigger for me, the better it is. So the Falcon, I own the Falcon. I bought. Uh, I've got the Disney Castle, and that's a big set. It. I don't know. There's something about having really large Lego things. I think just blows people away, and I just I love big things. So the bigger the better. Hence like, why big my big current big train big. is my current train is over a meter long yeah. because it's it's big, it's big scale. So I mean, your normal. You might have to do a drive by past the camera to make us see all that. We can't see it all in one go. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a bit of a choo choo train. Oh, where is it? There it is. There. So this is an American EMD uh, SD seventy AH. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a big so, train. Um, I'm, I'm currently trying to um, fix the. Oh, I just dropped it. The tank. There we go. <laughs> so that that's I'll one get of. Get parts in the mail in the next couple of days, mate. <laughs> one of three. So I've got I've got two of them currently almost. Well, I've got well this one's pretty much built. I've got another one which is this one here. So it's a different one again. Another one that's built, and then I'll build a an Australian version of this train, which they use in the Pilbara. Yeah, for iron ore. Yeah, they're, they're, they're big locos, them. man. I've been up next to them, and they are huge compared to what you see in the rest they, of the states of Australia. I think they're they're Roy Hill, maybe is it Roy Hill? Oh no, some BHP side anyway. They they make that same train in in a really weird colour. It's like a real dirty blue, I think, and grey. No, blue and brown. It basically looks some it look, ABC it like it looks like somebody's gone up with a paintbrush and basically just graffitied the whole side of the train. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean I'm inspired by a lot of things. People around me. So when I see like builds that huge guys do, I'm inspired to sort of go and have a go. And anything that's overtly complex, I like trying to reverse engineer. Ah, you better than me. And I, I like to figure out how how they built it. That's that's what sort of makes me tick, I suppose. And sort of you build, so you find some interesting techniques. It can be overtly frustrating because you never quite figure out how they do what they do. I'd love you to see a close. working. Sorry. Sorry, go. I'd like to see a working full garret with tenders at the back, engine, you know, with both sets in the middle. Have they managed to? Uh, have you seen a working Garrett? Look which model Garrett, though? Actually, I saw one from. What's the wheel configuration? Uh, oh god! What's the wheel configuration on a Garrett? Four six six four, I think. No, I thought. Oh god! Yeah, sort of like a big boy. Um, Is it bigger than a big boy? No, yeah, no. Garrett's are an articulated suspended unit. Yeah, it, it's a yeah. It's yeah so, is it, so is a big boy. Yeah, yeah, big boys. Large. <laughs> my, no, I think um, big so, large but Garrett's go from narrow gauge up to wide gauge, so yeah. Depends probably a G class. Um, yeah, it's a man G like. class. Um, that's probably. Um, that, that did happen. If, if you want to look at, you want to look at some crazy, crazy built trains. Go and have a look at um the Penlug Group. They do some pretty insane sort of trains. <laughs> Everything that they build though is normally an eight wide. Um, mm. so they build on a larger scale, but and they don't use standard lego track because of that articulation and the fact that they're so freaking long you'd never get them around the bend yeah. um because they just don't couple as soon as they go that's the problem with bigger trains it's not that the trains don't go around the track it's that when they go around the track and are towing something as they go around the track they are required to be on this really crazy angle and the magnets don't stay coupled and yeah. they're not pushing each other apart yeah. so um can like go and do a lot of those crazy trains they've got like um 484 northerns and um, big boys and they've got a couple of the streamliners that are built out of bricks and they do like 86 long stud carriages that are towed by like these crazy steam trains and there's like seven of them in tow um they're a little bit not quite the lego purist i suppose you could say because they put sound bricks and put lipo batteries in their motors a lot of the run. a lot of the train guys get into that really off off stuff uh, but... i mean it's just insane um is it the um who's the is it v love 
the Victoria Lego Train V V T V T L G Victoria Lego Train Group. Group, yeah. I think yeah. it is. They're, they're, they're down your way, aren't they, Dazza? Yeah. Um. Yeah, they, they have a really cool display. They're yeah, it's like MLTC, yeah. which is one, which is the Melbourne Lego Train Club. And, and there is the, the other one's not as big anymore. The other one was sort of an offshoot for the members that didn't get along with the ones in MLTC. Uh, uh, okay. And it's, yeah, it's they're, they're sort of... Right. They're um they they get ups pretty impressive so they they have some like really awesome MLTC brings some pretty amazing stuff to Brickvention but again there's a lot of off brand parts in it that are like special custom made stuff um, mm, yeah great they do like this they do this really sort of cool take on a Lego train display where they have like a painted background it's sort of like this yeah Lego train meets model train yeah. For the weird, oh, weird I keep thing trying to convince it's... them to build brick, brick built skies and that, and they just, yeah, oh, we spent too much money on the rest of it. And I've gone, but I was gonna say that's a pretty, that'd be a pretty expensive sky, but, that, but that's where they, they need to get some support from the rest of us to maybe build certain parts of it and then co display them. They tend to, they tend to not like non train guys coming in and doing other bits of their displays. Yeah, train people are weird. Yeah, what's well, it's, it's, it's hey, it's, no, no, not no, okay. train. I yeah. see that yeah. the nicest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are weird. I, very, I know. There's a weird Lego guy there. Okay. With. You're very, very specific about certain things, and that's okay. Yeah. <sighs> nah. I mean, I take no offense or whatsoever. I mean, every, yeah. different facts yeah, for different. They just different don't like strikes. sharing the the display side of it. If you're not building trains, you're not really welcome to put other stuff in their displays, and that's. That's where it gets me. You know, we could probably make the whole lot better if they were better. Oh, look. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have a feeling that I'm going to have to do a stream that is just going to be dedicated to train. Yeah, it'd be a good topic. I'll, I'll see if I can get a couple of the, the decent train guys to come along for that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that one. Anyway, yeah. it is starting to get late and I need to be up in less than three hours. Um, so uh, we should probably wrap this up. Bye. Everyone goes silent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, has, it, has everyone said their piece? I think so. All pieces. All their pieces. Their Lego pieces. Yep. Yeah, we're all happy. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us in the live chat. It's really cool for you to be a part of the conversation. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss us. We're here every Friday except for show days, which are not as many at the moment. But soon, my pretty, soon. Uh, I want to say thank you to Phil, James, Darren, Bailey, Joe, and Adam. Is that everyone? I haven't missed anyone, have I? Look, most an out no. amount of names I've had to remember in a while. So if I've got them all right, awesome. And uh, <laughs> we'll see everybody on hopefully Timmy's or RRB's channel on Sunday for Super Sunday stream. Until next time, keep on building, guys, and I will see you all whenever I'm on next. Ooh. Bye. Bye. Bye.